This is a very ambitious video that I want to share what I have learned on multi-tenancy. And to do that, I need to cover the following topics within the context of multi-tenancy. Hierarchy, log source groups or LSGs and log sources. Domain, which is a very vast topic. I will only cover parts of it here. And of course, events as well as events and flow collectors or, or processors also custom event properties again on the context of multi-tenancy and to define users and security profiles within every one of the tenants and domains and, and, and all that good stuff I learned this by using my free curator CE community edition the free uh, download of curator and there's there are a separate set of videos I also consulted with friends like uh, Brian Boyle uh, uh, of course uh, Mutas and Greg Davis and this topic is very very vast and complex and besides the the original documentation for the product I'm gonna be putting a link in the video description to the uh, this nice presentation given at the Curator Master class on domains and tenants. And I started by creating two uh, subnets, the dash 0 slash 25 and the dash 128 slash 25 that goes from, from uh, 1 to uh, 127 and this one goes from uh, 129 to 254. And if you're not familiar with CDAT ranges, I'm going to put a link to a short video that explains CDAT ranges uh, in five minutes. And the final objective is to put uh, two machines. So I put two Windows VMs, one on each network with the following characteristics. So the one on the top is in the is the dot five IP and the one on the bottom is the two twelve. Both are gonna be sending uh, Windows events logs into uh, Curator and I will be defining the Bank uh, of the Northeast is one tenant, the Bank of the Southwest is another tenant and every and and define two admin users which should be able to only see elements that belongs to every one of those customers and we will see how we will define we can define that in multiple ways in curator by uh, the, the, the the flow collector by the log source group by network hierarchy domains and, and and so it's a very very flexible way of actually doing that the final objective is and here log in as the admin so that's the guys that can see everything, the master administrator. So I see the 212 and the dot five. And if I go to the C1 admin, the one for the one domain, I can only see the, the dot five. And if I go to the other domain, the C2 admin, as we can see, we can only see the 212 uh, element. So let's get started and show you how I define this. We're going to be doing all the actions basically on the admin tab. I almost forgot to mention that we, it's not only the looking at the log events and it's also flows and scanner and some other things that we'll talk later, but also from the offenses tab. Uh, you will only see offenses that are based on the domain that you are in, in this case uh, C1 admin let's actually take a look at the other one and we also fire an offense from the other machine and that's the the, the only one that he, he should be able to see from the second network here so C2 admin while in the master it's not a master console but the console that is the, the main administrator we can see the offenses for all the all the actual elements so let's go into the admin tab and start uh, talking first about the network hierarchy 
So what we did is in here, we define, I'm going to go here into edit, and we basically define the customer one network we define the IP range in here and also by going in here we define the customer one network a domain sorry and we did the the, the same thing with uh, the customer two in many of these things when you deploy in the network hierarchy and other areas when you are making changes here you will be asked to uh, deploy the changes. So watch for that uh, and, and I think it is better to deploy the changes uh, one by one and then uh, proceed on the on the building of, of this. Next thing we did is that we created two log sources group, uh, one for customer one and for customer two. And think of these as just folders that allows you to group a bunch of uh, log sources together under a common name. Then under log sources for everyone, uh, we're here in the master console or the, the, the main console that sees them all. What you need to do is when you edit the, it can be auto discover or whatever it is. And, and this is again one way of doing it log source, one log source at a time. So you have the granularity at the log source. So we're going to show you other ways that are uh, faster to do it, uh, which is assigning uh, elements by the collector. So let's say that you have uh, one tenant in Italy and so you want to put a uh, event uh, processor collector uh, down there and you can actually assign everything that is in the year to that particular tenant so you don't have to do it this granularly but I want to show the, the granularity of it so basically I assign that uh, that log source of the windows that is on the, uh, on the upper network uh, to customer one and I did the same thing for uh, the other log which I assigned to customer two. Pretty easy. So they are now assigned to a log sources group. And the topic of domain is very extensive and covers almost all aspects of the uh, curator architecture and you can use them for segmenting networks, for uh, dealing with duplicated IP and its uh, concept is a building block that you will use within the tenants. So the next thing is that, that we did is actually uh, we created the, the two uh, domains and uh, notice that you can specify here not only events uh, but also uh, flows and scanners and uh, so on the event section and I'm going to talk, I'm going to leave the topic of custom properties to uh, for the end. But on the log sources, we define that log source group that we show you. Notice that this is the icon for the folder. Uh, we define it uh, to belong to this uh, particular uh, domain. But notice that you have the option of doing by an event collector. So I don't have to, everything that comes from that event collector will belong uh, to a, a particular domain. So we did that for, uh, for uh, every one of the actual uh, uh, domains. Okay, now that we have the domains uh, created, we create the tenant. So we, we went into the tenant management uh, console and defined uh, customer one. And basically, what we specify here are the EPSs. And since the uh, community edition only allows me 50 events per second, I assign 25 to each, right? Next, we went into domain management again and use these to assign the, the, the domains to the tenant. So customer one is assigned to tenant one of the Bank of the Northeast and the customer two was assigned to the Bank of the Southwest. And you do that by selecting the particular domain and then click here assign to tenant and then you actually select the actual tenant. Now comes a very interesting part, which is the security profiling, which you normally, on, on a single domain, single machine, you, you used to design what subnet, what elements, you know, from the network hierarchy belongs uh, to which user. So in here, uh, actually, I, we should have shown you that we created two users, uh, customer one admin and customer two admin, and we'll show that later. The important thing is 
Let me actually start by showing that you can actually select this by networks. Okay. And notice that you, you, when you start this, you have the all networks assigned here. The minute that you select a particular network, as we did from the network hierarchy, when you put customer one network or customer two network and you pass it to the right, then that uh, the all disappears and it gives you a warning about that. So uh, you can assign that by uh, network from the network hierarchy. But notice that you can also assign that by uh, groups and I did not have to use this in here, but I could very well have or by actual domains, which I also did here. I assigned this uh, to the domain. So notice the granularity. So and then this tab here tells you about the precedence. So are you going to define this by network from the network hierarchy? Are you going to define by log sources? Or you want both, the intersection of both to play a role? So you, you have even more granularity to select that. It's actually very, very flexible, I think. And we did the uh, corresponding thing for the second. Then uh, here on the uh, admin, we just you know wanted to show you that we create the actual users and we assign the security profile, which is what why you show you, and we assign a tenant to that particular user, and that completes the picture. That's all you have to do to actually define a multi-tenant environment, which is good for people who, who, who have many, many companies that buy Curator and they sell uh, Curator as an MSP. Uh, but it, you may find uh, usage of these things for, you know, companies that are, you know, different uh, geographies, different units, and you want to segment them uh, by, um, by, particularly by using the, the domain. I, I don't foresee a reason why you will want to play on the, the tenant management. But on the domain, uh, I hope that these uh, have given you an idea of all the very many things that you can do on it. Now, there's one more topic I want to cover, and that is the custom event properties. What do they play? Uh, what do they play a role in here? When you go into uh, the domain definition, notice that you have this tab here for uh, select custom properties. So, so let's say that I want to, you, you know, regardless of whether the log sources come from any event processor, this or that, I want to assign those by custom properties. So I can actually go here and select, uh, for example, uh, uh, source station. Yeah? And, and I can actually assign that says, you know, everything that comes on the workstation and I put here the regex for catching that particular source workstation name I don't care I want to assign this to domain number one and then uh, that's another way in which you can selectively let's say that you don't have this separated by event collector or by log sources and and regardless of all this you, you want to have the custom event property uh, to play a role on determining whether the log source will go to one domain or another. So I'm not going to use this in here. You may be wondering what is the precedence that this thing, uh, you know, what governs what? In, there are so many, many options that I want to define, you know, uh, what defines that. So in the case of the logs, and this is this comes from that nice presentation from the master class that I ref, uh, referred to at the, the beginning. So in the case of logs, the thing that takes, you know, precedent the first is, uh, oh, if there is a custom event property evaluated for it, and if that is the case, then that defines in which uh, domain and therefore tenant that goes. If not, hmm, if there is a log source assigned to a particular domain, no, okay, then uh, I, this is a log source group that this uh, uh, event actually uh, belongs to that is assigned uh, to a particular domain. And if the answer is no, then the event collector or processor gets actually evaluated. And if none of those have been defined, it goes into the standard default domain that you have when you have a single uh, instance, single uh, domain and tenancy and curator. And for the flows, it's similar, you know, 
it is the do I have the domain specified by the flow source or is it not if, if this belongs to a, a, a flow collector or processor that is assigned to a particular domain and if not uh, it goes into the default domain so I hope this gives you you know uh, an introduction to the powerful concept of multi-tenancy domain and all the granularity that curator has for assigning different entities to different aspects. Again, the domain concept is, is something that might be applicable to facilitate the way that you segment your uh, geographies, uh, groups within a company, uh, and again, dealing with uh, duplicated IP addresses and stuff like that. And I remind you that the, probably the best way of actually learning all these and exercising all these is going into the admin tab uh, from the Curator uh, Community Edition free download.